first step to getting a handle on this round knife is going to be squaring up some uh, corners on the bolsters and the tang there to get it all to fit a little bit easier. And I'm just taped up the blade with some painter's tape and I'm using a scrap of saddle skirting to pad the vice jaw so I don't scratch anything up. Uh, so I don't have to clean up deep scratches later. And I found a chunk of maple in some scrap that I had around. It's not the most interesting grained piece of wood. In this case it does have some character to it though. So I decided it was good enough. I was looking for something a little darker so I'll probably dye it uh, to a different color whenever we finally get it all together. And then it's a matter of taking it over and starting to drill holes. I took a file and uh, cut a groove along it so I have a straight line that runs across that I can see so that I keep my drills, uh, drilled holes in a straight line across them. And now I'd like to say that I have some fancy tool to actually do this, but this is actually just a screwdriver that I cut the end off of and ground the end to basically make a chisel out of it that I'm using to clean out the extra little bits inside there. And you just kind of keep working at it until it fits down tight on the tank. I didn't worry too much about getting the perfect fit on this. This knife is far my own need. I just kind of rounded up uh, the end a little bit into it. I wasn't worried about getting it to where it fit so tight you couldn't get a see the gap. But then shaping a handle is just a lot of grinding away at it. You might be able to save some effort by spending more time at the bandsaw than I did. But I tend to jump to the steps that take off less a little bit sooner because I have a tendency to overestimate how much I'm taking off sometimes. and You can't put it back on, so I try to make it a little easier on myself by just taking a little bit more time and not ruining the bleed piece entirely and having to start again. Now in this case I did off camera I took it back over to the bandsaw and shortened it up a little bit before I rounded this end off because it was just a little long. basically how it's going to fit on there. I also drilled the pinhole off camera. Now the blade needed a little bit more work. I didn't have it quite thin enough on the edge so I'm still doing kind of a final grind on the bevels. I'll have to re-etch it after this but I knew that from the start that I wasn't quite there on it. I'm not going to quite bring it to a sharp edge just yet. I'll wait until I actually finally get into the sharpening to put the final edge on it because I don't want to cut myself while I'm trying to work on all this. But I'm pretty much just going to take and finish up the grinds and then go through a couple different belts to smooth it out some. And get as many of the scratches out of it because I'm going to want that edge to be polished by the time I get done. The smoother the edge is, the easier it'll cut through leather. Now, back to the bench, and it's time to do some hand sanding on both these pieces. Uh, a trick that I learned actually from uh, doing gun stocks for uh, muzzle loaders is that you can take a wet rag, and you sand the wooden piece, and then you take a wet rag and wipe it down, and all of a sudden it'll start to feel rough again as the 
uh, sanding dust is wiped away or the pores of the wood, uh, the sanding dust comes out of it. So you just kind of keep taking and wetting it down and sanding it and wetting it down until it feels smooth even after you wet it down. And you'll get a really nice finish that way. Um, on the metal piece, of course, same thing as I did before. Just keep polishing that part that I ground on until I can't see the scratches in it from the previous grits. And I'm going to take it all the way up to a thousand grit sandpaper. And while that is down in the etch, I'm going to take and stain, or in this case, dye the piece of the wood with some leather dye. And I decided I needed gloves for that. Because this is probably going to be messy. But this is a light brown oil dye. I think it's sold as Pro Dye now, but this is an older bottle of it. And I'm just going to dab it on there. And it soaks in pretty well. And deeper into the wood than a lot of wood stains will. And I've always liked the way that it's come out. I'm just going to take a cloth and polish off any excess after it's had a chance to sit a few minutes. And there you go. It kind of brings out that grain nicely. And I just use wax as a finish. In this case, just paste wax. You can use oils or various spray finishes. All up to you. But and I like the paste wax on things because I think it gives a really nice grip. With still having a satiny sort of feel to it. Now the blade's out of the etch. I'm going to take some epoxy. This is just regular 5-minute epoxy you can buy at any hardware store. And start mixing it up and get it into the handle to glue everything up. I made sure my pin fit before I did this. I've got a little brass pin there and it made sure that it all fit together nice and neat while it was dry and not too much of it stuck out. Um, before I decided to mix up any epoxy. So we're just going to take that pin, put some epoxy on it, slide it in there, and then take a mallet, because it's a tight fit, and tap it on in. Make sure that it's all together. Clean it up a little bit. Any epoxy that's squished out, you want to get it right now while it still hasn't started to set. Um, clean up around the pinholes and where the bolster meets the blade. And then after that's had a chance to set, we're going to go ahead and sharpen. Now this is the last steps of sharpening. It's been through several different iterations of stones up to this point. Uh, this is actually a 6,000 grit stone and then a, a strop to finish it off. And like I said before, you want to polish that edge until it is like a mirror. It just needs to be as shiny as possible. Because then it's going to glide smoothly through the leather. Now there's all sorts of videos on YouTube where people test knives. Um, this is a piece of 8 to 9 ounce leather because it's a leather cutting knife. That's what I'm used to cutting with now. And you see it goes right through that. That was a piece of pretty dry, hard leather that's been in the scrap bin for a while. And it does okay on the roll cut, too. And then I wanted to see how it cuts curves. So, like I said, you'll see guys that are cutting paper and all sorts of things with knives when they make them on YouTube, but that doesn't tell me anything about how it's going to work. So I want to cut leather with it because that's what I'm planning on cutting with it. And I know what leather should feel like when a good sharp knife cuts through it. The other thing about a round knife is it's versatile in that you can use it to skive leather and thin it out where edges are going to overlap or at the ends of straps where they're going to overlap. So this has to be sharp enough to fillet a piece of leather. And it did very well. I'm quite happy with how sharp I got it.
The other thing I'll sometimes do is, is on uh, upholstery leathers and softer leathers. And I've had people kind of surprised that a round knife could even do this, but it'll also feather sky edges on upholstery leather if you get it really good and sharp. And the reason I do that is if I'm making uh, a bag or a pouch where that I want the uh, finish and edge, I want to be able to take that outside and leave it about a half inch extra that I can roll back on itself and top stitch. And if you skive it down and feather it, then when you roll it back and top stitch, it does not print through onto the outside. You don't see that it's obviously folded back piece because it lays nice and smooth. And that's the finished round knife. Next I'll have to make a sheath for it.